the audience, I would like to present you today the Fraunhofer Beyond Tomorrow Project Seneca, a robot sensor network for disaster management. So we probably all know natural disasters have the power to devastate whole districts in just one second, leaving people buried alive or even kill thousands of people. Uh, there are different kinds of disasters, for example, earthquakes like the big earthquake in Haiti in 2011, where over 200,000 people got killed. Other natural disasters like tsunamis, floodings, or even industrial accidents, like for example, the big explosion in this August in the Chinese seaport, Tianyan, um, where chemicals were just exploding. So, Finding, finding possible victims within such a disaster is a very difficult and dangerous task for rescue teams. And there is one limiting factor within this time, because all of those disasters require different actions to be taken. The limiting factor is time. So the speed in which possibly victims got found by the rescue teams often makes the difference between life and death. So, the most important number rescue people have in mind are, is the number 72. 72 hours, uh, after 72 hours, the chance for finding people alive drops down very dramatically. So, it is of outstanding importance to use these 70 hours very efficiently in order to save lives. So, typically, what are the steps in such a rescue operation? After an alarm, or beside, you have to be prepared that you have equipment at the site. After alarm, the so-called exploration force phase starts. In this phase, several questions come up um, for the rescue teams. What kind of disaster do we have? Are there possibly injured um, victims? Um, can we go safely as rescue team inside this area? Are there ways to go in? So, answers to these questions can take a little, uh, can take a pretty long time. So it's very substantial that you get quickly as possible an overview over the whole area. Um, after the exploration phase, the search phase starts, where usually the uh, rescue teams go into this disaster area, look for the uh, possible injured persons, and then the rescue itself starts. So this long time span of exploration and search before you actually rescue the people is taking a pretty long time. And that's the big challenge to reduce this exploration and search time span dramatically in order to save more lives. So our big goal in the Seneca project was, or the challenge we were facing was, reduce the time span for exploration and search. So what is, so that you have much more time for rescuing people. So. What is Seneca? Seneca is a kind of toolbox for speeding up this process. Clearly, um, if you think about how you can speed up those kind of, this process, you think of U UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles, to fly over this area to take pictures and to bring the pictures back so that you can see. That's what we are also doing. Um, we developed those um, UAVs further so that they can carry also a heavier weight, that they can carry sensors, specialized sensors like thermal cameras or hyperspectral cameras, and also can bring equipment into the uh, disaster area to spots where you think probably victims are. UGVs are also ideal. You can drive into this disaster area if there is for example, toxic substances, so the rescue team cannot go in. So we developed UGVs or tools for UGVs to go into an unstructured environment. And another topic, or very, very important thing in disaster management is also sensors. You need to know what's going on in this area. So there have been several uh, teams working on sensors, like huge or or high precision sensor probes, and also very small ones if you don't can bring them in there. So these were are the components of this kind of system. 
to connect all these system components, you need kind of communication. So in Seneca, we developed further the so-called SNet technology, with, which sets up an ad hoc network so that all the components can communicate each to each other and build a mesh network and can share the information. You can probably imagine all those components have, if you can buy them, different interfaces. So another big thing was we have to develop standardized interfaces to make it freely available, to make it um, easy to use and to integrate different components or components which are already on the market or already um, with the rescue team equipment. And clearly to set this functionality up, we need a middleware. We use the robot operating system um, just as a middleware to uh, implement all this functionality. Now we have this big picture of a lot of components, a lot of information, but the most important thing for the rescuers is to get this information out and to, to, to understand this uh, information. So in the Seneca core, there are a lot of algorithms, especially for fusing all this information. There's, this is a lot of data coming into the control station, so it has to be further processed so that the people can understand this information. It does not make sense to show everybody in the rescue team all of the information. He needs specialized information. So in the core of Seneca, there are the algorithms for controlling all the components, for fusing the information, and for displaying the information to the different rescuers. So this is Seneca. You can imagine there are a lot of components in um, the project itself was funded by Fraunhofer itself in a so-called Beyond Tomorrow project. Eight, uh, six institutes teamed up together to bring this thing up. So in the following, I will show you just a few examples about this whole system to give you an expression what you can do with these tools. Okay, UAV for aerial overview. Clearly, this is not a new technology, but this technology is ideal for, for search and rescue. Usually those, those um, UAVs you can buy, they have all different interfaces, so they're pretty difficult to integrate in a, into, into a control station. So what we first done, we've developed an interface for controlling UAVs or, and flying them autonomously over the uh, area you have an interest in. And then we, we also modified the hardware itself, or uh, built new ones with eight um, propellers to carry heavier weight, because usually optical images are not ideal if you have uh, a lot of fog or smoke from, from fire, so you need different sensors, like for example thermal, thermal cameras or hyperspectral cameras. So you can easily attach them to this kind of UAV, and also these UAVs are equipped to drop payload over interesting points in the disaster area. As shown here, you see the sensor probes are just falling out. Um, so UAVs, we have the view from the top, and there is another aspect. You need to know how can I go into this disaster area? Where can I drive? So you need a very precise geometrical map of your disaster area. Therefore, uh, autonomous or mobile robots are ideal, usually teleoperated. We uh, further developed our algorithm so that we can go autonomously in a really unstructured environment, not like driving on, on the road, uh, where you have signs, where you have lines written down. It's much difficult, more difficult to drive in an unstructured environment. So we developed a lot of functionality regarding with respect to localization, mapping, and so-called SLAM algorithms, active SLAM algorithms. So the robot goes into an area we ha where he has no idea where he is, and he tries to find the most interesting points or the most structures by um, evaluating his sensor information. The output of each EV can be maps, just simple maps. You can measure then, hey, can I drive in with my heavy tools into this disaster area or not? And you can go in in unsafe areas for, for the rescue teams. And you can carry payload with those um, uh, robots. High-end sensor props. As already stated, it's very interesting to have always a current view of your disaster area. So 
we developed a modular sensor node where you can just attach um, different sensors, put them together, and bring this sensor probe by the robot into the area and let it let it uh, put down there. So it always monitors the whole area the whole time. So you can always have an, an actual view of this area. Another thing, okay, if you can't drive in with you in such an area, in a disaster area, or the people cannot, the rescue teams cannot go in. We also develop so-called best price sensor probes. I have one with me. Um, these best price sensor nodes are just have a very simple design. They have also the SNet technology so that they are locked into this mesh network and can also be uh, located where they are, where they are, are in the where they are in the area, and um, we've integrated a simple set of sensors like a microphone, like a acoustic feedback, like lights, thermal sensors, and so on. And these sensors can just be dropped into this disaster area or even in, into houses just to enable you to go somewhere in where, where the rescue teams cannot go in. So these sensor probes are activated just by you can bring them in, you can just throw them in, or you can just um, um, bring them in by UAV. First we thought about a, a cannon to, to throw a lot of them in, um, but then we decided to, to throw them by UAV. Usually they are activated, I was already too hard knocking, they are activated just falling on the, on the earth, and then this this uh, sensor probe gets all the information, gets the sensor data, and delivers it to the control station. Another aspect, the sensor probe is also an SOS button. So if a possible you, uh, person finds it, he can just press this button, and he gets located where this uh, node is or the person is, and also um, he gets an acoustic feedback. So. Um, additionally, they have a small motor in, so they're vibrating and they can fall into or roll down uh, uh, stairs in, in buildings. So last but not least, control station. As I already said, so many information. You need to, to, to transform this information in understandable information for the rescue teams where they have the chance to use it and to plan their rescue mission precisely. So in the control station, everything is put together and gives a global overview of the um, disaster area. So these are just a few components of the, of the whole system. So um, where are we now? So Seneca is, is, is not a complete system. Seneca is the open system. Seneca is just a very, very small step and a small try to implement something to reduce the time for safe and rescue to use this 72 hours much more efficient so what we've seen or what the difficulty for us is to bring these systems into application to bring these systems uh, to organization to rescue teams is very very difficult for us as a small team we've been uh, 12 people working three years on there were a lot of students but we cannot bring it into, into, into the real-world application, even if the results are very, very promising. We've tested it several times in a, in a test area for disaster management, and it was really, really promising. So bringing all the worldwide, there are a lot of researchers working on these pro this problems. They are all linked to national uh, authorities. They have to use their their country-specific um, um, interfaces and standards. So this limits, is, limits us to bring up a solution which, which will work, which can work all over the world. So um, the goal is just a, a simple soft, a software and hardware toolkit for, um, um, for doing this. So, in 10 years from now, in our opinion, it would be very nice or it would be very good just 
that robot assisted exploration and search and in search and rescue missions is just the standard procedures. We have standard uh, interfaces so that we can integrate all components which are built all over the world, which are used uh, just uh, upgraded versions of existing equipment and uh, mm -hmm. an available set of, uh, let's say, application specific or domain specific algorithms that can be used by the rescue teams. So our big challenge is how can the worldwide research teams be linked together? How can international standards or best practice um, be enabled um, to, uh, to, to enable this technology and that uh, rescue teams can use this? So, thank you.